Hey there, traders. This is Sam with your E-mini Futures Market Recap for Tuesday, October 22, 2024. Time is currently 8.05, almost 8.06 a.m. Eastern. As promised, we have levels of potential support and resistance identified in the SPY on this chart. These will be used to help inform trades in the E-mini Futures today following a set of rules. Check out the description below this video to learn more. Before I get the numbers finalized and sent out, I just want to point out something. You notice the time at 7.47, 7.48 a.m. Uh, Tuesday morning, is that yesterday in last night's video, I mentioned about this hourly chart. You have this down candle. They're stair-stepping their way up to the top of this, and it's pretty likely that this would play out in the downward direction. So I just want to put a couple reference lines here. So say here's the top of this. So the point is you don't want them to get above this. They could get above this, but you just don't want hourly closes above this area for this uh, consolidation pattern to play out down. And maybe we'll just go ahead and put a vertical line here. So this marks the end of this, this intersection right here. If you went short here at the end of the day, like in the overnight session, not something I normally do, but just what look what happened in the aftermarket. So if I turn on the aftermarket hours, aftermarket session, 24 hours, from this point to here, there's like a 30 point drop overnight. So they're down to 580.96 right now. So anyway, that worked. So they are currently down in this area, 581.39, right below this level at 581.40. That leaves some wiggle room where they could open at 9.30. It's an hour and a half from now before the opening bell. So other than pointing out these two zones here and here between the dotted lines, there's really not a lot to discuss about today's levels. Price could go anywhere today. I was right about the initial pullback, so staying on top of things in real time will give us the intel we need to determine the high probability next direction the market might take. So perhaps during the open session today, we'll get some clues. Whatever happens, we'll come back to this chart after the closing bell to discuss the aftermath. Any trades entered in the E-minis based on these levels in the SPY will be dissected, and the plan is to make money and learn something in the process. That's the 80% likelihood of what can happen, or if we give money back to the market, which is the 20% probability, we'll still likely learn something in the process. Catch you on the other side. It is now after 7 p.m. We're back for the rest of this recap. Today was a solid day of trading, and we're going to break down how you could have pulled a nice 12 ES points out of the market using the levels we discussed this morning. The SPY hit two key levels, or at least one level and one zone. This level here, this zone, pretty clear to see that. So that gave us multiple opportunities for profits. I was able to take the first trade. We'll look at that one shortly. So we'll cover the trades how you would have played them according to the rules. First trade came in early as the SPY hit 581.40. This has now been adjusted with a five cent buffer toward price. So 581.35 was the operating level if you chose to do that. Per the rules, this was a solid setup for a short position taken as soon as the SPY hit 581.35 or 581.40. You would have entered the E minis at the market when the SPY tapped this level. They didn't waste too much time and moving in the right direction for a quick base hit. And you're able to ride that down for four points. Whether you applied that five cent buffer or not, this would have worked without any real issues. You can see that they came up and spiked here later in the day. You see they came up, they came down. So let's just say this level instead of 581.40 was somewhere in the neighborhood of 581.50. So over 10 cents a little higher or so. Then it's pretty clear to see that that would have given you a recycle trade here. Enough time had elapsed when they got out of this level. And this is where adjusted up five cents. So to give you both trades, a little bit cleaner trade there, and then nice recycle trade up the first time they came down and hit it. But that's a non-factor because recycle trade wasn't in the books today. So one trade here, and then the next trade, later in the session, the SPY made their way up to this zone here at 583.41 to 583.85. I don't adjust the levels on zones, but this would have set you up for the second trade of the day, also a short trade. You could have entered when the SPY hit both extremes of this zone, or you could have scaled in anywhere in the middle. Were sold right in the middle just by itself one little position there again the move played out as designed we're going to say you sold at each level that would have made your average entry point right about here that would be the light blue line with your profit objective and your fumble threshold levels shown in green and red lines respectively so price stayed mostly within the fumble threshold but never signaled any real danger the pullback gave us another four points at each of these levels. So combining the two together, that's a total of eight points. And with this trade down here, that's 12 ES points for the day. Not too bad. 
we'll look at the recording of the first trade or first and only trade that I took, which was right here at 581.40. Between 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. I was in a meeting. So when they got up to the zone, I was away, chose not to key in an order that I probably wouldn't have been able to keep an eye on. But this first trade, which I'll start playing now, was just setting this up. Kind of see me messing around with a few things, pulled my little clock down. Get this one out of the way. So I sold at the market without even adjusting the level, and you'll see that happen pretty quickly right there. So looking for just four points, a base hit with two contracts. And they gave it to me within a few minutes. I'll scrub ahead. You can see the rest of the day. I did keep this screen recording going for the rest of the day, up at least until 3.30. So when they got to the zone, I was nowhere close to my computer. So I missed that trade, unfortunately. Kind of glitchy here, but let me just get up close to it at least so you can see. There we go. All right. And then when I got back out of this zone, I got back to my computer and kind of did a couple things. You'll see me messing around just to see what would have happened. I wanted to see here. I'm just going to pause this. Let's just say just, you know, worst case scenario, you sold at the bottom of the zone. You did not sell anywhere else. You still would have had a base hit eventually. And they didn't. And, well, honestly, I don't know if they would have violated any rules getting out of the money here. Better just to scale in. That's why a zone exists because the whole area should provide support and or resistance. But anyway, this is the rest of the day until 3.30 and I didn't do anything else. So on the daily chart, nothing to really speak of, just kind of keeping themselves in this little range here. They're not getting much lower than, I'm going to show you something in a minute why this was a pretty good area for them to bounce off of. Um, and they, you know, got to fight quite a bit to break above and go higher, but there's really nothing bearish. I can go to different time frames all the way down to, you know, from this is a daily chart. I could go to the multi-hour charts down to like 30 minute, 15 minute, 10 minute, and nothing really is standing out too much, at least on the SPY chart. Quick look at the IWM, just since we did say yesterday that they had a pretty bad uh, down day. Well, they continue to go down a little bit more today. So that could be some writing on the wall. We'll see. At least it is for the IWM. So you have this, this day back here. We've talked about it a few times before. Volume picked up, pretty important. They found a bottom. That was an important area. The base of the market saying you know, they, they opened, went down, and just shot out of this area and haven't been back since. Well, you can see they're starting to show you, they have been for a while actually, that I'm just going to snap, turn the snap mode on here, and I'm going to make a trend line. I'm going to snap to the bottom of this. I'm going to choose the bottom of this breakdown candle the next day we got above. Not this one here, because later you see they bounce off of it here, and today they bounce off of it again. At least they are in the process of bouncing. So we've had, you know, one, two, you can say three, three or four times where this trend level, just based on this little move here, and by the way, nothing to the left of our extended thing to the left, nothing down here. Uh, is relevant. This is just this little section here. So you can make the argument that this is something they're they're trusting. A lot of times the uh, price doesn't respect a 20 period moving average, but the 20 period moving average coincided with this trend line back here. They bounced it there. So I guess my question is, are they going to bounce here and go higher tomorrow? They're currently at 582.49. Come down a little bit from where they close, it looks like. Close, official close of today, according to TradeStation here, 583.32. Hourly chart's always good to look at. So here is the bearish consolidation we talked about. This is after the close yesterday in the overnight session. Sure enough, they pulled down, but they've been climbing back up. But they haven't closed anything above the top of this yet. Tried to a couple times. Two or three different, at least two and a half hours worth of time here. They could not get above this section. So they're fighting it, but they want to go higher. But that doesn't mean that the bottom can't fall out. I'm not saying that it will. It's just that anything could happen. I guess that goes without saying. We are looking at the logs now. The first one is the PBR, playing by the rules log. You can read the notes. Here are all three base hits and how you would have traded them. 12 ES points for the day. Pretty good. And the Sam's Trades log, just the one base hit here at level three. So that wraps it up for today, folks. If you found value in this recap and you're ready to stay ahead of the market each day, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss a trade. Drop a comment below if you have any questions or want to share how you did today. I love hearing from you guys. Thanks again for watching. Remember, stay disciplined, stay focused. I'll see you back here tomorrow with new levels, another game plan. Have a great rest of your day.